Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at another incredible update given to us by the team over at Yuzu Emulator. And as we can see, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is not only booting and rendering, but is also able to progress into gameplay. The changes that make this possible are in the very latest Yuzu Canary version, and as you're about to see, when I do a sword charge, we do in fact have properly rendered 3D graphics, however, unfortunately, all of the lighting in this title is currently completely broken. Now, not only have we seen compatibility improvements to this emulator that have allowed Link's Awakening to boot on its day of release, we have also seen absolutely enormous performance increases to games like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and Super Mario Odyssey, which we're also going to be taking a look at in this video. Now, staying on Link's Awakening for a few moments, when we do actually go into a dungeon like this area, Tail Cave, which is pretty much the first dungeon in the entire game, we do have some rendered graphics. However, it is just a completely broken and flickering mess. So to anyone out there with epilepsy, I would highly recommend not playing this game right now. So as I said a few moments ago, we have also seen absolutely enormous performance increases thanks to some improvements that were added I believe in Canary 2624. So if you were on a Yuzu Canary version that is before that, please make sure to update using the Yuzu maintenance tool or the installer which I showcased in my full setup guide. The Mario Odyssey gameplay footage you're watching right now is captured using the Canary version that was just before this new performance PR got added to the emulator, and to be honest, running the game on my 3700X clocked at 4.3GHz, my performance, I would actually say, is pretty decent. However, check this out. Thanks to some cooperative work from developers Blinkhawk and Finks, they have given us a brand new update that absolutely enormously boosts the performance in games like Super Mario Odyssey, Bayonetta 2, Pokemon Let's Go, and there are literally dozens more that have been affected in a massive way. Previously, we were only able to get around 35 to maybe 42 frames per second in this area on my 3700X clocked at 4.3, mind you. And as you can see, regardless of what camera angle I use, regardless of these small bits of chunking stutter, we are getting absolutely unbelievable performance levels now. That weird chunking that I previously mentioned basically happens every time you transition between one area and another. We're about to get one just now. There you go, you can see it kind of stutters for a few moments, but aside from that, the performance is absolutely phenomenal on this new Canary version. If you thought that performance improvement was impressive, you haven't seen anything yet. So for this example, I'm going to be comparing the Patreon preview, which in itself gave us a performance improvement in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, in areas like the Cinnabar Mansion and in the overworld itself. In this build, you can see in this mansion we're only able to run the game at around 20 to 22 frames per second from time to time, and to be honest, for most people, this would be a fairly playable experience. However, the Yuzu devs are well aware that not everyone's going to be using a 3700X or 8700K, so let's take a look at another insane performance improvement given to us by Blinkhawk and Finks. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you, in this brand new update to Yuzu's Canary version, they have given us an almost 400% performance improvement. To demonstrate this, I've obviously had to unlock my frame rate, which makes the game speed up, but this is just an absolutely incredible update. As I said, if you are on any of the older Yuzu Canary versions, please make sure to update to your latest. On top of these drastic improvements to our performance, we've also seen some improvements to to the graphics. These improvements come in the form of these small bits of debris and falling leaves in front of the screen, and also the now correctly rendered light shafts in Viridian Forest. In Pokemon Let's Go and Super Mario Odyssey, these improvements are not just kingdom or area specific. In Super Mario Odyssey, for example, you can see again right here in this central hub area of Cap Kingdom, I have got just as much of a performance boost, pretty much staying in the mid to high 60s and 
sometimes over 70 frames per second, whereas before I was in the mid to high 40s. It's also not just performance improvements we've seen in the latest Canary versions, we've also seen some pretty damn impressive improvements to game compatibility, so let's take a look at just a few of those titles now. Final Fantasy VIII being our very first port of call, this title is now booting, getting to its menus, and with the aid of some patience loading through the very first very slow cutscene, or the aid of a game save dump from your Nintendo Switch, is now going in-game and rendering its graphics very close to perfect. Unfortunately, as with some other games like Onimusha Warlords and some of the LEGO games like LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, it also has this strange BGR issue where some of its colours are just weirdly mismatched. Audio wise, the game is also pretty broken as with many other titles on this emulator, so until that's fixed I would have to say that this game is probably not playable or at least not enjoyably playable right now. Next up on our list of games for improved compatibility we have Super Mario Party. This game previously would load to this controller selection screen and as soon as you hit OK it would pretty much just crash. However, in the latest Yuzu Canary versions it no longer crashes and even progresses to its intro menu and also its character selection screen once you've pressed SL and SR. Now while this title will actually progress further and go into gameplay, the graphics are pretty damn broken as you can see on the 3D rendered character model just there. This is in fact in-game gameplay footage and similarly to what we saw in Link's Awakening, it is just completely broken with pretty much only the UI elements showing. Our next game for boosted compatibility is one I know you guys have been waiting for for a long time. Tetris 99 is now booting and goes in-game on Yuzu Emulator. Now while it does have fairly decent performance in these menus, its performance when you actually go in-game and especially when all of the other CPU players Players get loaded in is pretty damn terrible and on top of this it doesn't render anything unless you activate the accurate GPU emulation option within the emulation configure and graphics section. Gameplay and playability wise it's pretty damn terrible running at only around 10 frames per second and similarly to Cadence of Hyrule featuring The Legend of Zelda it is very GPU demanding using about 80% of my 1080 Ti's utilization right now. As I said, tons of games have seen massive performance improvements just like Pokemon Let's Go and Super Mario Odyssey and Super Smash Bros Ultimate is just one of those titles. Unfortunately though, at time of making this video, Smash Ultimate is still not considered playable. As before, if you move around in gameplay in any other way other than jumping like you're seeing me do right now, your game's just going to freeze, softlock or just completely crash outright. Regardless of any of that, it's still really cool to see performance getting improved since when this game eventually does become playable, its performance should be very, very good at that stage. Yet another game that has seen a pretty big graphical and performance upgrade in the latest few Canary versions is Pokemon Tournament DX. Now, unfortunately, since transform feedbacks still are not implemented in Yuzu, we still do not have rendered player or character models or Pokemon models, whatever you want to call them, but performance has, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, dramatically improved, jumping from around 30 to 35 frames per second up to well over 60 or 70 practically at all times. As with Super Smash Bros Ultimate, once Pokken Tournament DX gets graphically fixed, this game should also be in an absolutely awesome place playability wise. The final game we're going to be taking a look at in this compatibility guide is Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition and as we can see in gameplay, it has seen an enormous boost graphically in the latest Yuzu Patreon preview. If you aren't already aware of it, this Patreon preview, which includes the internal resolution scaler, is now free for absolutely everyone to use in the Yuzu community, all you have to do is head to Yuzu's Patreon page down in this video's description and download the preview build from there. This build allows you to use the new experimental resolution scanner. Once your games are scanned, you're going to be able to play them at resolutions like 1440p, 4K or even 8K if you wish to do so. This Patreon preview build also has a lot of graphical fixes which should be merged into Yuzu Canary in the next few days and hopefully we will also have the resolution scanner in Canary before long also. But just look at how awesome Hyrule Warriors now looks on Yuzu. 
obviously we still have some graphical issues like these transparency issues on the trees and foliage and the game is currently only running at about 15% at 9 or 10 frames per second but it's still a damn good progress considering that previous to this Hyrule Warriors was just a completely black screen with absolutely nothing rendered. Once this game becomes more compatible and gets a little bit more performance, it should become the best place to play Hyrule Warriors on any emulator. As I said, if you wish to try out this Patreon preview build, you will find a link for it down in this video's description. While you're there, I would also ask you guys to please consider pledging and supporting these guys. They are creating one of the fastest growing emulators for any modern console ever, and in my honest opinion, I think these guys should be getting 10 times the amount of support than they currently are. In the next few days we should also be seeing even more improvements to Yuzu in its canary builds and as soon as any of that stuff is added I will let you guys know as soon as I possibly can. For now though that is going to be the end of this video. Before I go I also want to give a massive thank you to all of my own Patreon supporters over on my Patreon. You guys are absolutely awesome helping me to pay for things like power bills, internet bills, water bills, all the games that I require for testing in videos just like this one and absolutely everything else responsible for the maintenance and running of a YouTube channel. If any of you want to help with these kind of videos and the day to day running of B SOD Gaming, please consider heading to my Patreon link down below and pledging or donating to support. As I always say guys, these pledges or donations are absolutely not a requirement to get help from me here either on YouTube or over on my Discord server, for which you will find a link down in the description if you do need any help, but they are massively, massively appreciated and as I said, really, really do help with the day to day running of my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to also hit the like button down below. And if you enjoy these kind of videos, please also consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload and release a brand new video. Once again guys, thank you very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.